Your weekly hacking team update. Flash is patched and dumped all on the same day, and United gives out 1 million miles for an exploit. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, humans. I'm Shannon Morse, and this is ThreatWire for July 15, 2015, your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. First off, a huge thanks to everyone watching this show three times a week and supporting us. And thank you for helping us pass our first major milestone on Patreon. You guys deserve a huge pat on the back. So go ahead, just pat yourselves on the back. To the news. <laughs> first up is a lot of news about Hacking Team to catch up on today. So on Tuesday, Hacking Team released a statement from their chief operating officer saying they'll release a rebuilt version of their internal infrastructure and RCS, the product that we previously reported that the FBI had purchased. Version 10 of RCS will be released in the fall. Along with this, we also learned that the RCS product uses a rootkit installed on the UFI or the UEFI BIOS so that it remains undetected and installed even when someone reinstalls the operating system or they stick in a new hard drive in their machine. Now, according to researchers at Trend Micro, the RCS agent only works on computers with UFI BIOS systems made by Inside and AMI, but those are both pretty popular BIOSes. Now, an attacker most likely needs physical access to install RCS on a target machine, so enabling a BIOS password and enabling UFI Secure Flash does help. Now, lastly is news on Hacking Team and Bitcoin, who'd have thought? Now, although Although Bitcoin is supposed to be anonymous, Hacking Team's RCS version 9.2 had a module called Money Module, which could track cryptocurrencies by exploiting a file called wallet.dat.dat, which is used to store the Bitcoin owner's private keys. Now, with the RCS keylogger, it wouldn't take long to capture a password for an encrypted wallet and use it to track public transactions posted on the blockchain. <laughs> Adobe has released another patch for Flash as of Tuesday, and this one fixes two vulnerabilities found during the hacking team dump mentioned in previous episodes. But today's story is not just about that, it's also about Firefox and Facebook. So first off, Firefox by Mozilla has blacklisted Adobe Flash player 18.0.0.203, that version. Now this means that Flash is disabled by default in Firefox, and you'll need to manually update to the newest patched version of Flash if you decide to keep it. This is most likely a temporary move, but at time of recording, Flash was still blocked. Now second is Facebook's chief security officer. On Twitter, Alex Stamos of Facebook said, it is time for Adobe to announce the end of life for Flash and to ask the browsers to set kill bits on the same day. Even if 18 months from now, one set date is the only way to disentangle the dependencies and upgrade the whole ecosystem at once. It'll be a day of celebration here in the Hack5 warehouse, that's for sure. Lastly, for today's stories, apparently United Airlines really is paying out on their bug bounty program. They just announced a couple of months ago. Now, Jordan Wines, a founder of Vector35 and a professional hacker, was awarded a million miles for reporting two bugs, one of which was a remote code execution vulnerability that they paid out on. United still does not allow bug bounties on their onboard Wi-Fi, avionics, or entertainment system, but Wines' payout amounts to 40 domestic flights and is worth $25,000. So, anybody fancy a look at United Sites? Our featured comment today comes from Mark Hari, I hope I said your last name right, who is in response to yet another Flash vulnerability, says, so basically we have three options. Go totally Luddite and eschew all technology, use text-only browsers, or take a few risks online. If you can do it without 75% of the web, that's great, but what about the rest of us? Telling us to uninstall Flash and or Java is like telling us we can only use Linux. There's another fundamental flaw in your logic. HTML5 is not any safer. In fact, because it's still new, it's extremely likely that it, as time goes by, more and more serious vulnerabilities will be discovered. It's a clear case of the cure being worse than the illness. And he continues, there's a middle ground here and it consists of software makers being more responsible and users taking more responsibility for their own actions and security. Whew. There are some really good points in there and a few that I personally disagree with. 
the amount of sites that use Flash is steadily decreasing. Web Technology Surveys deems only 10.6% of the top 10 million actually use Flash, 23% of the entire web, according to the HTTP archive. And that number keeps decreasing. However, some of those sites are still very popular. Luckily, many have moved away from Flash in the past couple of years. Now, while Flash isn't a huge concern for the server of the site, it is for the user visiting that site. Most sites use Flash safely, and they probably aren't a huge concern for you as a user because they, we think, are trustworthy. For example, Hulu. But when you have tons of sites that still use Flash, which forces you to have to download Flash as a user, which then you might forget to update or turn off, which then inherently makes the user vulnerable to cross-site scripting attacks from other sites that may very well be looking to exploit you, etc. That is when we suggest you uninstall it. And when it comes to HTML5, which is about five years now, uh, five years old now, I could make the same argument for a lot of new technology. I mean, WP was vulnerable, so we got WPA, but that has problems too. HTML5 is indeed still new, but it's also, also safer than Flash. HTML5 is also not a large target for a lot of attackers, and by using Flash, it's kind of like using WEP. You're basically giving your computer to a criminal. Not only that, but HTML5, or, yeah. HTML5 is a standardization. Adobe Flash is a company-owned third-party plugin. So no technology will ever be perfect, but it's a standardization. And because it's a game played between targets and attackers, we're always going to see that uh, it's basically like a, a tennis match. We need to keep up to date with the technology and evolve and advance. And advances will find vulnerabilities vulnerabilities in HTML5 too, but those vulnerabilities will create new security features and enhancements and so on and so forth. I do agree that users do need to take responsibility for their actions and security, and software devs need to create products that are tried and true before release. But that's a really big remark to make to most folks out there on the internet, and it'll take a really long time for us to get everyone on board. So thank you again for your comment, Mark. It was really insightful and sorry for my really long rant, but this is really important to me. I did leave links in the show notes in case you're interested in the thoughts that I had. And if you have comments on today's stories, leave them below. Before I go, I want to give a huge thanks to everyone who has supported the show so far on Patreon. And if you find value from this, you want to spare a few cents an episode, even a quarter a month, which is about two cents an episode, so not much, consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash threatwire. We may even feature your adorable fur babies like these ones, which, by the way, Schrodinger and Powerball are freaking adorable. And remember to check out our Google Plus community, our Patreon, our new t-shirts available at the hakshop.com website. I hope you'll contribute and help us keep this coming completely independent and ad-free. And if you can't donate, a like, a share, a subscribe, a t-shirt, <laughs> those go a long way too. Threatwire.net is the place. And with that, I'm Shannon Morris, and I will see you on the internet, hopefully without Flash.